what do you want now and what do you want in the next 10 years? That's a part of life because everybody loves to complain. How you present yourself and your outward perception matters. I have to stop associating with certain brands and how that affects the way people treat you is cool to care. Today I want to talk about rebranding. I feel like it's like the perfect day. Uh, it's Friday the 27th of September. It's pouring with rain right now. I don't know if it's just me, but I love this weather. Everyone like complains about the rain, but I feel like when it rains, it's the only weather that I, I can focus for long periods of time. When it's sunny, I just want to be outside. So like when it's pouring with rain like this and you're inside, I feel like it's the only weather that motivates me to actually be productive it just feels so romantic and nostalgic and everything i love about autumn especially when the leaves are turning orange i love it i think it's so beautiful first of all let's talk about why september is the perfect time for change everybody summer is done everyone is back to work everyone's back from gallivanting in Ibiza or Europe or Italy, wherever they've been up. And the weather is changing. Internally, I feel like we are preparing for a time of solitude and recovery and transition. And I think it's one of those times of the year where you actually feel like, okay, well, something's changing now and I feel like something needs to change within me as well. That's how I feel. I feel like something's shifting. And in summer, I just want to be outside. And then in January, when obviously the annual calendar refreshes, you're already in the middle of winter, so it doesn't make sense. It's never made sense for that to be the start of the year, but that's a whole other conversation in itself. But right now, I feel like things are shifting. Also, when you get to the end of the financial year, when you get to the fourth quarter, there's a lot more money and finances being passed around and I feel like it's very significant if you're in a creative industry if you're in content creation because a lot of companies make most of their money at the end of the financial year and there's usually more opportunities for jobs and for income at this time of the year as we approach Christmas with Black Friday a lot of companies spend money on marketing and advertising so I know for my line of work that benefits me it might not for you but in general that's just an interesting point to make whereas in January when we're all refreshing it's just dry season like people don't have money it's the thick of winter so it doesn't feel to me as refreshing as the time period we are in now also externally our environment is changing I think that obviously goes for any season but right now as the days are getting darker it allows you more time to focus on the things that you know you should be focusing on and for me it allows me to focus more on things that revolve around me progressing as an individual whether that be learning or studying this is the time of the year where I can obtain the most focus and concentration that comes with the weather and the temperature and you know it getting dark at 5 p.m like that that's why we feel so encouraged to stay at home and be at home and do those other things so anyway getting on the topic of conversation for today so I want to talk about rebranding a big part of this is acknowledging who you are and understanding what you want to do and what how you want to present yourself and I know a lot of my conversations revert around things on social media and how you present yourself online just because that's the line of work that I feel I am most knowledgeable to talk on as I've worked in marketing for three or four years now in some form whether that be social media or that or production or content creation myself I feel that's where I have the most knowledge to speak on and I think for a lot of people that's also very significant and no matter what line or industry you're in social media is a big part of every single area and if not now it will be the first thing i want to talk about is understanding the importance of outward perception although a lot of people argue that you're always going to be perceived no matter who you are so you should just be yourself i think outward perception is also really important and i think it's something that we don't place enough significance on in that the things that we do and the things that we say both online and in person have significance your digital footprint is a real thing. First impressions are a real thing. We should take more pride in trying to orchestrate them in the best way possible to our best ability. If you don't know who you are, then other people are gonna decide for you. Everything you do and everything you associate with and everything you consume creates a perception of who you are. And I don't think we should be neglecting that. Everything you do and say online is creating an image of yourself and I don't think that means that the image can't be altered but I think we should all pay attention 
to how we want to be perceived and that doesn't come from a place of overthinking it I just think we should consider what we post and how we want to be perceived online and also in person how you choose to show up what you choose to wear how you choose to dress are all shaping the way people look at you and the way people choose to interact with you I think I saw this video a couple weeks back or maybe it was last week and this woman was reiterating a scenario that had occurred um, and a lady had posted on TikTok a story time of how she'd gone to interview an airline company. This lady had applied to work for an airline company and she really wanted this job and she showed up to the interview and she didn't bring her passport. They only do these interviews annually so she showed up, she didn't bring her passport and she wasn't allowed to interview. She got online and she told this entire story with very kind of like negative connotations in association with this airline brand I guess in the hopes that maybe they would reach out to her and say, you know, you're welcome to come back for another interview. I think they must have reached out to her and said, can you take the video down? And then I saw another video of a woman who was commentating on it, which I very much agree with. It's like, by that woman putting herself online and sharing that story, that negative bait, which a lot of people will interact with and, you know, could potentially get a lot of views for that kind of five minutes of fame. She is now sacrificed any chance she has with working with that company because of the connotation she's now formed and I feel like this is really important to consider when we put things online is that what do you want now and what do you want in the next 10 years what do you want as an entirety if you were at I did a talk on Saturday I was speaking about this and the importance of declining things in this moment in this present now and sacrificing things in order to achieve something greater in the long run and I don't think we think about this enough as a generation and we're all be very impulsive myself included and we want things now we want immediate gratification and that's something that's come with social media and being online and that constant hit of dopamine when we receive things in such a fast-paced environment and even the way that we live it's everything is super super fast-paced but slowing down and understanding what is it you actually want decide the difference between the good and the great and this might benefit me now but this is not going to benefit me in the long run but this woman I'm sure it would be frustrating. I'd be frustrated if I went to interview at my dream job and I forgot something. We're human. We make mistakes. Human error. That's a part of life. But now what she's done is she's taken to online to let out her frustration. And I think we need to learn sometimes that like things are just not worth it. This is what I mean when I talk about outward perception is I don't want you to become someone who is second guessing every time you make a decision but just to be aware of how you would like to be perceived we need to process how we feel sometimes before especially if we're in an emotional state i think that's key is process how you feel before you take to social media and i've done this there are videos that i've considered posting in the past and I've thought about it and then I'm like actually no that doesn't align with me and I think overall if there's anything that's super negative without approaching it in a way that is with the use of critical thinking skills and knowledge I try to resist as much as I can because people take the bait. Negativity online is like the largest, most delicious form of bait. Everybody loves to complain. Everybody loves to join up and complain and, and be a victim. That will always be popular culture because there are so many people who choose to be in that state. So I encourage you to have pride and self-respect and a little bit of elegance and critical thinking when you approach these scenarios and when you feel certain types of way and consider how you will be perceived outwardly. The second thing I want to talk about is what does it actually mean to be yourself and what do you do if you don't know what that is or who that is yet. Recently I listened to a podcast episode on Diary of a CEO with this guy called David Epstein and he debunks the 10,000 hour rule but amongst that he also conversates on the practice of learning a skill and one of the best things I took from the conversation was that going broad not narrow is going to bring you the most happiness trying as many things as you possibly can is the best route to 
wellness and success. He argues that there's this notion in society that we just take a personality quiz and we just discover who we are and we find out everything about ourselves, our strengths, our weaknesses, what we're best at, our best qualities, and that's just simply not true. And you have to try as many things as you possibly can in order to figure out what you're good at. And this is something I'm still figuring out because life has taught us for so long to take a specific path in that if you don't, when you leave school, go to university, and if you don't leave university and go straight into work, and then you get your 25 days a year off and you enjoy your weekends and if you don't live this correct pathway that you're doing something that is considered abnormal or you don't feel fulfilled because for so long we've been trained to think in that way and it's difficult like you know right now I'm 22 I still feel like I'm at the beginning like I'm figuring things out I have periods of times where I'm like what am I doing what do I even enjoy do I even want to be online and I question myself constantly but I've come to somewhat peace with the fact that like this is a part of life and this is a part of the process and I don't feel like that maybe ever truly goes away. I think it would be weird if we wouldn't question, I think it would be strange if we didn't question what we did and why we did it. Like I don't know if there is an actual real state of complete fulfillment. Listening to this episode, I took away from the fact that like we all have to try things and age isn't relevant in that process. It doesn't matter if you're 30 and you decided like now today's the day that you want to switch things around. If you're 18, if you're 46, like it doesn't matter. It's so insignificant. But we need to retrain our brains to think about the fact that that is what we have to consider acceptable. We have to treat our lives that it's acceptable to change our minds at 32 and decide that we actually want to go into marketing or be a lawyer or whatever it is. It's okay to change our minds and to figure things out. It's better to walk through the wrong door and admit you've walked through the wrong door than walk through the wrong door and stay in that room. I think we think that we're gonna find what we're looking for on the first try, when in reality, you might have to change jobs every six months. You might have to leave the job that you've been working on for the last three years. You may have to go against what you feel like you've been taught your whole life. And you have to go against the grain and that's what takes the most coverage. And it can be lonely and it can be frustrating. But I think you have to fall in love with the process of those times in life. Um, I really wish like sometimes we could understand the value of being in the process and actually experiencing things and like fighting for what we want and where we want to get to because I think if we all got there we would realize how much more fun the process is than the end result and then when discussing now like taking all of those qualities and attributes and trying new things and we talk about what does it actually mean to be yourself because I think a lot of people throw this term around and it's like well in order to have most success you just need to be yourself how do you build a platform how do you gain a following or gain a community is like people are like just be yourself like that's the most important thing I feel like people don't talk about what they mean when they say this like when people like be yourself yeah but what does that mean what do you mean be yourself and I think what I've come to realize is that it means doing things without questioning what you're doing or overthinking what you're putting out there and what you're sharing so I know this kind of feels like it slightly contradicts and I'm not my first point which was about how you're being perceived and I'm not talking about a place of like um if your emotions are extremely high or if you're putting something negative into the world but just in terms of your personality um what you put out there it's like okay maybe I, you just start you think oh let me do a video on this then you question you're like oh no I haven't seen anyone do this before is this going to be corny like everything is corny until it's done that's something I've realized this year, if not one of the most significant things. The first person I heard speak about this was Brenda Hashtag. But then I also like even like my manager spoke about it at this talk again like a few days ago. And everything is considered corny or cringy until you're then making £10,000 a month from it. Or until you're being gifted by all of these high-end brands or you're getting invited to sit front row at fashion shows. Everything is considered corny. 
so you have to get over it there's no other way around it i'm sorry but that's the reality of the situation it's something that i've had to realize and it's something you're going to have to realize as well there's no other route there's no alternative route everything is considered corny until you're at the top of the game but anyway what does it mean to be yourself and i think this comes from a place of like not questioning yourself too much and getting over the fact of projecting your personality online i think that's the reality of it is that one thing that i think i've struggled with is like sharing my opinions and views online i think it's something that i was a lot more restricted with initially but now i've come to realize that like that's what actually brings people to attach to you like if you have an online presence and you don't speak it's so easy for someone to come in and replace that for all you know you know ai is going to be we're going to have ai influences in five years time whatever but personality i don't think that can be replaced i think that when you allow yourself to talk and be yourself and for people to see who you are that's where the attachment is because no one else can communicate with your audience the way you can and that's what also attracts brands and people to want to work with you because when you actually hold significance and you hold power and people trust you and you have to put yourself out there and show what you like what you don't like what you listen to all of these things make up who you are and you have to be able to communicate that online for people to then either detach or attach from you and if they detach there's no problems with that i sometimes like have over analyzed my like when people like follow will unfollow you know you can see your insights on instagram and it will be like 150 people followed 140 people unfollowed you know what that's okay please go leave because it's all it's doing is filtering out who actually messes with you and who actually enjoys your content on who doesn't and i really appreciate that like if i could chop my followers in half but then every single one of those people really messes with me and when i post a video they're really interested in what i have to say i would do it because that community and the engagement is so much more important and significant to have those real relationships with people and then when you can actually meet people in real life and talk to them and have conversations like that's real and that's all comes from you just sharing yourself online so have a think about that next point next point let's let's wrap it up absence absence guys let's talk about absence the opposite of presence absence are you ready okay so we have spoken about why this is a good season for change the second thing we spoke about was the importance of outward perception and then we spoke about what does it mean to be yourself being yourself within that trying new things and now we're speaking about absence okay i always say this to people and i think people don't talk about this enough the rooms that you're not in are just as important as the rooms you are in let me get into it first of all i'm going to read you a passage from this book called the 48 laws of power i'm going to read you this passage from chapter 16 use absence to increase respect and honor obviously in context okay judgment too much circulation makes the price go down the more you are seen and heard from the more common you appear if you're already established in a group temporarily withdraw from it this will make you more talked about and even more admired you must learn to leave create value everything in the world depends on absence and presence a strong presence will draw power and attention to you you shine more brightly than those around you but a point is inevitably reached where too much presence creates the opposite effect the more you are seen and heard from the more your value degrades okay so this is important because some of you will show up anywhere and everywhere okay and as much as that i believe at the beginning of your career that's really important and i'm not saying not to do that be cautious and wary of where you show up to and where you decide to show face considering how do i say this in a humble way um like i don't mean to sound um how do i say this saying this with as little arrogance as possible i think as do a lot of people in london you get invited you get set invites all the time if you're in the creative industry if you have a following on social media if you're in the right circles whatever you get sent invites all the time like every single day i would say i get invites to events um either like dm or email whatever and most of the time I don't show up if we actually like we'll put it in a percentage of like maybe I go to events like 15% of the time when I'm out of 100 times I'm invited whatever um, and I think you need to understand the value in choice and choosing where you show up to and that 
treating your energy as this form of like currency exchange and your presence as a form of currency exchange is like because you're not just showing up you're showing that this is important enough for me to attend to and as much as I feel like that's important it's still a choice and we still need to be wary of that so just because like you know they're giving out something for free there's going to be free drinks there that doesn't mean you should show up um, also the the circles that you're mixing in are very important I think this also comes with understanding the importance of not searching for validation in these social scenarios a lot of the reasons why you may attend somewhere is due to how you feel like it could benefit you in a way of seeing certain people or taking a picture with certain people or conversating with certain people and I don't think as much as I think networking is important and I'm not saying don't do this as a whole I just think it's important to be well-rounded when thinking about these scenarios and not think about social climbing but think about the value that it might actually bring to you or the value that the brand whoever is hosting the event could bring by you attending because sometimes it just takes you attending an event for then someone to consider you for a role or for a campaign or you get speaking to someone and then you end up getting involved in a project so that's significant I'm not telling you not to show up but I think being selective I don't think enough people are selective and intentional about where they attend and where they show up to be intentional is this bringing you value why are you attending are you leaving your house for no reason are you wasting makeup for no reason? And sometimes you don't know. I'll give it to you. Sometimes you don't know. You don't know if things are worth going to. So go, test it out, test the waters. I think the longer that you do this for, the more you realize what's worth going to and what's not. But don't just be showing up anywhere and everywhere, okay? Please. Selective. Let's be selective. And that's just like, and I think this can be applied in context with not just events, but also with people. Like, I'm being real. And people are like, oh yeah, we should get coffee sometime. I don't say that to people actually. I don't say it because I don't mean it. Like I don't say, if I say to you like, oh, let's go get coffee sometime, like I'll mean it. I don't just say that for saying steak and I don't like people who do that. Some people are like, oh, hey, it was lovely to see you. We should get a drink sometime. If you don't mean it, don't bother because I'm not offended. Genuinely, like genuinely, I don't care. Like if you want to like, it, I don't feel like there's anything that annoys me more as like someone who's like, oh yeah, we should get a coffee sometime, we should get a drink, and I'm down. There might be someone that I genuinely feel like I could like immediately I'm turned off. If I then message you, I'm like, hey, what about this? And then you don't reply to my message, immediately I'm so thankful to God that I did not waste my time and go and attend that because why don't say things and not have intention behind them this comes with people as well don't just be meeting people and talking to people and giving your time and energy to people for no reason please i think sometimes this can be difficult when there's a sense of desperation to find people that are like you and like-minded and to be accepted and join forces with people who have similar interests to you but I think you have to learn to be comfortable with the idea that those people may not find you for a while. And you have to get comfortable with spending time with yourself and knowing that those people might not come for a long time. You may not find your people for another 10, 15 years and that's okay, but you just have to enjoy the process and enjoy the journey. Learn to not seek that outward validation learn when it's important to exchange your energy and when it's not who are you giving your time to like because you can support people without going and meeting them for a coffee every week like understand if this something is actually going to bring you value or not value your time and energy and reinvest that back into yourself and learning and expanding your knowledge or investing in your physical health or your mental health without prioritizing constantly exchanging energy with people last point okay guys we're getting there we're getting there next point last point final point your brand pillars the context of brand pillars can mean different things depending on what industry you're in and obviously we're talking about rebranding as a whole here um when i searched them up these were the things that came up as being i guess in more of like a business setting or marketing setting purpose positioning personality perception and promotion let's forget promotion as a whole i see brand pillars as an entirety 
a game of association. What are you associated with? Where do you eat? Who are you friends with? Where do you stay? What do you listen to? Do you, where do you dress? Where do you go when you want to go out for a night out? Where do you buy your clothes? Um, what do you eat for lunch? Like everything is association. And this is one of the things that has now shifted the way I shop because of a lot of my content is based around fashion and are based around clothing. And I started to realize that if I want to appeal to certain people, I have to stop associating with certain brands. And that's just one example. My favorite example for this as a whole is the Zendaya rebrand. Zendaya is 28 now. And she started acting or I think she was cast for Disney when she was 13. And she did a range of shows. I think the biggest one that I remember was obviously Shake It Up. It was very youthful, extremely childish in the best way possible. Like it was perfect. She was perfect for what she was doing at that point in time. It was extremely fun and youthful. But the trouble with that is that when you gain fame in a certain scenario, it can often be very difficult to shift your association. And this links perfectly back to what I was talking about earlier um, with the woman who had told the story about the negative experience she had with the airline interview and how now her claim to fame is the association with her negative storytelling of one interview at one point in her life. So Zendaya was on Disney Channel and now she's 28. She's associated with a bunch of different high-end luxury brands. The films that she's in are now considered alongside movies that have a lot more depth and are widely admired and spoken about and would not be categorized in the same space as Disney Channel. And that takes time and there are so many artists and so many and actors and actresses who were not able to do that and who were not able to shift. Another person who I think has done this really well recently is Sabrina Carpenter. Again, Sabrina Carpenter was on Girl Meets World. How she's been able to go from that to like now, slightly more mature, sex appeal, super flirtatious, young, fun, looks amazing, her outfits are incredible, to this literal like pop star, superstar, has also been amazing and has taken time. And I think two things that both of these people are doing, Zendaya's obviously had the help of like Law Roach. He's been a part with part of her on this journey and one of the things that they've done both of these artists have done is how she has changed her style and how that has changed the association she has and shifted the way that she's perceived when she's in certain spaces so she wouldn't have been someone like Disney stars don't attend like and sit front row at Louis Vuitton or Gucci but she's now managed to like shift and change that and then you know also being in films where her acting is taken to a high level and far more seriously. And she's done that by, through her fashion and by shifting what she wears and, and working with Law Roach in order to be perceived in a, a far more mature manner. And I think Sabrina Carpenter has also done the same thing here. Although her music isn't super complex or her lyricism isn't anything incredible, I think she shifted by the way in which she chooses to associate and the clothes that she chooses to wear. So overall my point in this, because I don't want to talk for too much longer, how you present yourself and your outward perception matters. I'm not with everyone who's saying, you know, oh, it doesn't matter, like just be yourself or like, you know, um, beauty is skin deep, like all of that. Okay, like for you, maybe. For me, um, I understand the importance of showing up as your best self and how that affects the way people treat you and I've said this so many times the way you choose to show up and present yourself affects the way people treat you whether you like it or not argue with yourself I think this is just a rule of nature I don't like the fact that nowadays it's considered cool not to care and this runs back to the same point of that it's corny until it's done or it's corny until you're making a million pounds from it it's cool to care if you are attending somewhere consider what you're gonna wear if you uh, are showing up to something, consider how you might do your hair or your makeup to suit that place. Care, like care. I think it's good to care. Um, if you're attending a meeting with someone who could potentially be paying you in the future or you could potentially be having uh, a business deal with, they could be a future employee and a future employer. Um, potentially, they could connect you with someone. Show up in a way that is gonna reflect how you work and who you are as a person 
put effort in. Show people that they are worth effort, not just for them, but for yourself. Whether you like it or not, people will treat you differently depending on how much effort you put in to yourself, to your physical health, your body, your mental health, all of these things. Discipline gains respect. Um, effort gains respect in the correct scenarios. Don't forget that. And don't let people try and convince you otherwise. Show up. And especially if you're, guys, if you're in your 20s, like I'm not being ageist because everyone and anyone is welcome, but like, girl, like sometimes I think about it, I might complain or not like how I look or whatever. And it's like, I'm 22. When I'm 40, I'm not gonna look like this. And that's the reality of the situation. So let me make the most of it now while also obviously maintaining my health because health is most important. Enjoy it, be present, dress up, look good, enjoy the attention because you know it's not going to be like this forever everything is temporary everything is seasonal okay guys i think that's all for today i'm done i need to go get on with things so i'll speak to you later i hope you enjoyed the video let me know your thoughts down below what's most significant or maybe like what you've actually been struggling with the most because these are all things that i still struggle with i'm not coming on here trying to claim to be perfect um these are all still things that are very much present in my life let me know what you feel like you're, you're most struggling with and if you do need help on anything else in particular let me know down below and i will try and give you my best feedback possible but for now have a great day have an amazing day in fact and i will see you in the next video